You know, there's been so many movies about racing or movies that have to do with racing and NASCAR and stuff like this where it's like trying to build a car that you can race. Like, at this point, I really just want there to be a Mario Kart movie. I want there to be an animated Mario Kart movie or a live action. Well, I mean, is there technically, like, does Death Race count as a Mario Kart movie? Just as live action? I've always kind of wondered that because they get power-ups and stuff. It's just more deadly. Ford vs. Ferrari is based on a true story and it tells the story of Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles who come together to work for Ford. They work to create the first Ford car that will be featured in a race and that race happens to be in Le Mans and they take on Ferrari in 1966. The trailers for this movie made it look really good. I really love Christian Bale. I really love Matt Damon. They're both really good actors and the film is directed by James Mangold who directed Logan, Walk the Line, Pretend to Yuma, three of my favorite movies of all time and really knows how to direct a movie and that is no different here. James Mangold directs the shit out of this movie. It is perfectly executed. All the racing scenes are really, really well directed. These are probably the best directed racing scenes I have ever seen in a movie. And for a movie that's not solely based on racing, he did a phenomenal job making you feel like you are part of the race, that you are the driver, that you are actually partaking in these races, no matter if it's Le Mans, if it's Daytona, there's a Daytona race in here. It, he does a really good job at staging the fact that he puts you right into the driver's seat. He does everything to make you feel like you are part of the race. And the directing of these races, too, really goes into the fact that these race scenes are so great because they're actually in focus. This is a director who knows how to direct racing scenes. I think Ron Howard I think Ron Howard did a very good job with Rush, but I think James Mangold really outdoes him in terms of the racing scenes. The racing scenes in this movie just had that visceral energy to them where it was just like, man, I don't want these scenes to end. There's not many races in the movie, and I was actually kind of happy about that because this movie isn't about racing. It's about two people who come together to work for a car company to build a car that can compete with Ferrari. I thought the writing, the craftsmanship behind that, the way that this story was put together was very smart because this could easily have just been a by the numbers racing pick. And it's not. There's only about three races in the movie and the, the last 40 minutes are really, really good with the racing. And I really, really loved the musical score in this. It's just it's just that kind of music you want to hear when you are racing. Like it's music like you ever play that game Rally Sport Challenge for Xbox? I don't know if that was only on Xbox. I don't know if PlayStation people got it because us Xbox fans were better. But like Rally Sport Challenge, they always had they always had that cool like drive music, you know? Like the car chase in Goldeneye, that has perfect music. Even though I don't really like the score in Goldeneye, that part of the score in Goldeneye is perfect for that scene because it's it's two sports cars racing each other basically we have to talk about matt damon and christian bale this is probably the best i've seen matt damon in a while probably since the martian this is definitely one of his better performances yeah i feel like he's been kind of he's been kind of up and down lately not in terms of performances but in terms of the projects he chooses this is definitely his better one, and I think that he had more confidence in himself to give a better performance in this movie because it was it was more of a cohesive story. Christian Bale is just spectacular anyways. That dude can win, like, millions of Oscars. And I would not be surprised that both of them get nominated for a lead actor Oscar nomination. It's, they're that good. Everybody else in the movie is good, too. Like, Josh Lucas, of all people, is in this movie. He's not a good actor. He's somewhat good in this. He's also that asshole. He's a really good asshole, too. He, I was really surprised to see Josh Lucas in this movie. I was like, he's actually pretty good. With these racing scenes, I've already kind of mentioned it, how well-directed they are, that they bring you, that they make you feel like you are part of the race, that they make you feel like you're the driver. And a lot of that also has to do with the way the movie is shot, with the cinematography. Whoever the cinematographer was for this movie, 
excellent job. I think I've mentioned this already that he kept the camera in focus with the racing scenes. This is why I feel like that these races in this movie are probably the most authentic looking races in a movie about race cars. In focus, you can actually tell what's going on and it's just so well realized. It just feels energetic, it feels organic, it feels authentic. And that's what I loved about the cinematography in this movie. In terms of issues, uh, one is a nitpick, uh, and I can see people kind of being turned off within the first 10 or so minutes because I think people will kind of check out and be like, this is just a by the numbers biopic. It did feel like that at times, um, not gonna deny that, but I think there's enough driving force, <laughs> look at me, I just made a pun, behind this movie to really keep the energy and the flow of the movie going that I can overlook that by the numbers thing. These characters are just so investing and you're just so intrigued and interested and invested in this actual story that it kind of it kind of just escapes your mind after a while. But one issue, the legit issue that I do have is some of the pacing, especially in the second act of the movie. There are some scenes that I, I, I think I fell asleep for about two minutes. There's not a lot that happens in the second act of the movie. A lot of it is just businessmen in suits in corporate rooms talking business and business deals. The second act is still really interesting. If I have to be honest, I did want to see a little bit more of the Ferrari side of things. They don't really delve into that. It's more of, it's more of what happens on the Ford side. The Ferrari stuff we kind of deal with at the beginning and then it just goes away for almost the entire movie until you see Enzo Ferrari at the end. We don't really see the perspective from the Ferrari side. We only see the pers perspective from the Ford side. And I think it would have benefited the movie a little bit more. We got maybe a couple of scenes from the perspective of the Ferrari side. But nevertheless, this movie is so well acted. It is so well shot. So well directed with a really, really energetic driving musical score that just makes you want to get behind the wheel and race. These racing scenes are so well realized that I gotta recommend Ford vs. Ferrari. I'm gonna give Ford vs. Ferrari an A minus. One of my favorites of the year. Thank you for watching my review for Ford vs. Ferrari. You guys are the best. I will leave my link to my website in the description below. There you can find all my links to my social media accounts. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.